Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Back to the Nikon D820, or the D850, depending on what it's going to be called. The successor that we're expecting to be announced any day now, um, potentially on Nikon's actual anniversary date on uh, July 25th for their 100th anniversary. The um, Let's call it the D820. The sensor is rumored to be, especially if we look specifically at Nikon rumors, but other sites are either following their lead with that information or um, also have confirmation on that, that we're going to have a 45 to 46 megapixel megapixel sensor. Now, I, I would think it would be 46. We usually see even numbers on these things. But uh, is that enough? I, I talked a little bit about this when I was just going over the specs in the previous video on the 820 um, and the specs that are being rumored and then the specs, the four differences that I would like to see in the specs. And if you haven't seen that video, have a peek. It was just uh, one or two videos ago. Uh, but the what I want to drill down here on is the the sensor itself and resolution. We often have people um, in two camps. We have uh, we already have more than enough resolution. We have people in that camp saying we don't need more, and you know, forty six would be plenty if not too much. And then we have people in other camps always that want more resolution, and that would. Uh, prefer to see uh, an even greater than 46 megapixels here. And typically in the past, resolution has driven the industry. In other words, Nikon, Canon, all, all of the various companies, they've used that as a selling feature. That whole thing is kind of cooled down. But in this sense, in this specific situation with the D820, the successor to the D810, this is... Nikon's high-resolution body. This is their pro body that uh, studio photographers use. A lot of studio photographers, a lot of portrait photographers prefer the added resolution. A lot of pro, working pros, like the resolution of the 810. And when it came out, it was class-leading. And as I would said in the previous video there, I would like to see Nikon remain class-leading in this body because if it comes out at 46, um, it's barely beats the existing Sony a7R2, and it doesn't even match the existing Canon 5DS and the 5DS-R at 50. So I would like to see Nikon get out ahead of the competition because this body's going to be out for a while. So let's let's not bring out a body that's already behind the ball because if this body's probably going to be out for a good three years, especially if we see um, a halfway tweak to it like we saw with you know, the 800 becoming the 810. It was essentially the same camera. We just saw some refinements. Nikon often does that. You know, they've had in the past where they had, um, you know, the D, D2H and then the D2HS and things like that where we see a halfway refresh, but it's essentially the same camera and it stays on the market for three or four years. So if this camera's coming out now and it's already just beating the Sony competition and not beating the Canon competition, they're already behind the ball, in my opinion. And there are other options from Nikon if you don't want a high-resolution body. But for those of us that like having the access to a high-resolution body in a 35 millimeter format without needing to step up into medium format, I think that it's better for Nikon, it's better for the consumers, it's better for the market if Nikon is class-leading here, as was the 800, the 810 when they came out. Let's have an 820 that comes out and, and leapfrogs the competition, steps up the game. Let's deliver on an 80 to 100 megapixel sensor. And I'm thoroughly convinced that we have the technology right now. Technology has advanced since the introduction of that 36 megapixel, that, that very good performing 36 megapixel sensor, by the way. That thing is amazing. There's not much that beats it. And especially if you downres it, it's class leading on high ISO. And I think we could easily see, with current technology from Nikon and from sensor companies, an 80 to 100 megapixel full-frame sensor that equals the performance of the D810 or betters it. If it was equal to, I'd be very happy because there's still not much out there right now that can beat the 810 um, with its 36 megapixels for high ISO and for um, all of the sensor uh, parameters that we look at, like dynamic range and color depth and things like that. So I would really like to see that. That's what I would like to see. And 
I'm traditionally haven't been in the camp of always more megapixels, but again, this is Nikon's high megapixel body. It's its pro body. It's the body that a lot of uh, commercial photographers use and people that want and prefer high megapixel cameras. And if Nikon wants to stay competitive and doesn't want to bleed more market share to medium format, I think this is important. But I want to know what you guys think. What do you think? Uh, what is your preference? You may not need more megapixels, but there are other options in the Nikon lineup for you then. But do you think the 820 should be class leading? Do you think it should come out, as I do, at 80 to 100 megapixels? Or are you guys okay with it coming out as Nikon Rumors is stating that it's going to be 46 megapixels? Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Uh, for all the reasons I've given why I think it should be more, if you disagree, let me know why you disagree. If you agree, let me know. If I missed something, is there another reason it should be class leading like I'm saying at 80 to 100? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say and having a discussion on this. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.